Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning and uh, welcome. We'll uh, continue to study about prayer and intercession today. So we can start with a word of prayer. Would someone from the online batch like to pray? Anybody online? Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this wonderful day that you have given each of us a day to know you, to grow in you, and to love you, Lord. And I pray that our act of learning would be an act of worship towards you. We thank you for Pastor Nancy, and we pray, Holy Spirit, that you will uh, impact us through the words that you give her. Thank you, Father, for each student here. Thank you for the hunger that is that you have placed within us to know you more and to grow your name more outside in our worlds. Thank you, Jesus. In your precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Nisha. Um, thank you for leading us in prayer. So uh, we so far have been learning about praying in the spirit and the many benefits of praying in the spirit. And we talked about a couple of key things we said when we uh, mention praying in the spirit. It is praying in uh, unknown tongues. And uh, we also said that we can pray without boundaries, which simply means that things beyond our limited understanding, human understanding, can be prayed through when we pray in tongues. Uh, and also, we can pray according to the will of God. So Romans chapter 8, it tells us that the Spirit helps us to pray according to His will. So when we pray in tongues, every prayer is a 100% perfect prayer in line with the will of God. Because the Holy Spirit already knows the mind of God. And so it's the Holy Spirit who is helping us to make those prayers. Those prayers are according to the will of God. So that is something we saw. And then we uh, also saw that the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. So for us to grow in the Lord, um, I do not go through the um, a couple of chapters in the book of Romans. If you have the time, you can read it. Um, Romans chapter 6, Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 8, where Paul will, will talk about the struggles of the flesh. Okay, He'll start talking about it and uh, uh, he will ask the question, so who can help me? You know, How can I uh, overcome the struggles that I have in my flesh? He'll, he'll ask that question and then it'll flow into Romans chapter 8, which speaks about the power of the Holy Spirit. So uh, one of the things that helps us overcome our fleshly weaknesses, um, there can be all kinds of you know, fleshly weaknesses that uh, each one of us are struggling with, things like maybe laziness, um, a very weak will, where we are not very determined, not very focused, or it could be other things um, like jealousy, lust, pride, so many um, works of the flesh. But how do we overcome all these things? when we pray in the spirit. And remember, I shared with all of us that John the Baptist said, he who comes after me will baptize you in Holy Spirit and in fire. And what is the work of the fire? It burns up whatever is light or we say chaff is burnt up when um, fire is lit. So the same thing happens when we pray in the spirit. It's like the fire of God is burning. So the evil of the flesh gets burnt up. So it makes us a new person when we um, use this ability that God has given us. Pray a lot in tongues. You want to overcome your fleshly weaknesses, want to overcome um, those, uh, you know, those um, uncertain parts of who we are, pray in the spirit. Makes us a very strong person in the spirit man when we pray in tongues. And then we also saw that when we pray in the spirit, we can actually edify ourselves because Paul said that he who prays in an unknown tongue edifies himself. So if I want to build myself up, we've all built ourselves. We want we are here in Bible college, some of us online, some of us here in class. Reason is you want to build yourself up in the word of God. You want to build yourself up in God. That's why you're here. Now, if you want to build up the spirit, 
if i want to build up my spirit i can pray in tongues and that will build me up wherever i may be you know it's going to strengthen me and enable me to stand strong with god we also talked about the fact that um when we pray in tongues it keeps us in the love of god so we want to flow in the love of god for ourselves and for people how to maintain that love how to flow in that love uh, it's possible when we are strengthened in the spirit man so we saw from jude uh, a scripture uh, or a couple of scriptures that actually talk about it and then the last point that i uh, stopped that was from the passage of isaiah 28 verses 11 and 12 where, where god had promised okay this is way back god had promised about the uh, rest and refreshing the rest and refreshing that he would bring to his people how would he bring it to the people in isaiah 28 and verse 11 it says with stammering lips stammering lips stammering lips is what uh, stammering lips and another tongue he will speak to this people stammering lips we all know you know people who stammer right you're not able to speak quickly fluently um they kind of um uh, uh you know, it's it's not smooth flowing stammering lips and uh, another tongue another tongue is a different language so way back in the old testament god had promised that such a language will be given to the people now what will be the use of that language the next verse there it says this is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest and this is the refreshing um yet they would not hear so when a people pray in that with those stammering lips okay and in an unknown tongue what happens there's a rest and refreshing for whom for the spirit so the spirit can be strengthened but you see uh, every part of us needs to be taken care of so even your body has got to rest and in that has its own way of uh, um, receiving rest but if you want rest for the spirit and what to do pray in tongues we may feel very weary very tired um very strained sometimes even in our spirit man but if i want to find rest for my spirit just start to pray in tongues just begin to pray in tongues maybe if we're feeling so stressed we don't even know what to say just pray in tongues right so the peace comes in and the uh, the rest for the spirit man comes in when times of confusion so um if this is something that i personally practice especially uh, at times when i have to make decisions and i'm feeling so stressed like i don't know what to decide sometimes i just look at the clock and i'll be like okay 15 minutes i'm not i have 15 minutes so i'm just going to sit in one place and i'm going to pray in tongues that's it because i don't even know what to think what to decide regarding this particular matter so just sit just pray what happens uh the the kind of stress that you're sensing in your spirit right eventually you're just giving it all to god and the holy spirit begins to take over uh and even your spirit man feels the rest the peace the joy that um that can only come from his presence so at times when we uh, are are in a place where we are not able to function because of maybe a, a sense of tiredness in your spirit okay you uh, can just pray in tongues so i remember once there was a particular uh, sunday where um, uh, all the uh, pastors had to preach their own sermon and for whatever reason that time i was not getting a title i had prayed and prayed and prayed usually um, you know pastor tells us much in advance maybe one month two month before he'll tell us hey this sunday you guys need to preach your own sermon uh, so preach whatever god is putting on your heart so then we have time to prepare we have time to study and everything but this once um, even though time was given and i was praying that okay i should what is god speaking to the church what should i talk about i never got it i never got it very uh, a little closer to the to the actual date i just decided okay this is heights 
uh, all the time is gone. I have a little bit of time left. Uh, I need to prepare, but I need to know the subject. Then only I can study, isn't it? So I just locked myself up in the room and, and I just started praying in tongues, praying in tongues, praying in tongues, right? And uh, it, it's like uh, all that tiredness. Somewhere my spirit man was so tired, I was not even able to think. But at the end of that prayer session, when I came out, I just got two words in my spirit, uh, new wine. I just got those words. And I had not even thought about it. New wine. What is new wine? Then I started studying that subject. There were a lot of sermons. There was a lot of content, scriptures from the Bible. And then I was actually able to write out a, a, a message. And I remember that Sunday when I went and I preached, everyone came up to me and they were like, uh, uh, something God was speaking to me. Something so fresh that was released today. Because obviously, I didn't come up with it. It really came from the presence of God. In, from my tiredness, uh, as I started praying in the spirit, right? God, not only did he impart strength to my spirit, but I needed, at that moment, I needed uh, a title or a subject or a focus. And God gave me that subject. And then I was able to write, elaborate on it further. Okay, so I, I'm just telling you practically, this is how you apply it. Uh, when, when you're stressed, when you're tired, when you're, um, you know, not able to think, not able to make a decision for especially your spirit man, just take time out, sit down 10 minutes, just pray in tongues, right? And then you'll, you'll see how um, you, you feel strengthened, you feel fresh, and uh, you're at least able to think something move along the uh, line that God is showing you. Okay, So uh, rest and refreshing. Sometimes we just need that rest in our spirit man. And make sure you, you keep a, a lot of time for yourself and just pray in the spirit. Now, what else can we do? When we pray in the spirit, um, it is also a prayer language through which we can praise God. We can worship and magnify God. Do you remember what happened when uh, people were baptized in the Holy Spirit for the first time? What happened at that point? Acts chapter 2. Okay, they all started speaking in tongues. Then what happened? Okay. So... What happened? The disciples, they were speaking in tongues. What about the others? Okay. How many people came to watch them? Any idea? Huh? Sorry? 120. No, 120 is the disciples. I'm saying outside. How many people? Hmm? Around 3,000. Hmm. Okay, 3,000 responded to Peter's sermon. Now, how many watched these people when they were speaking in tongues? Okay, let's say we don't really know Okay, the exact numbers. But uh, the Bible lists out some, um, some categories or communities of people. When you count it, there's at least 15 different communities. And uh, Luke writes that all these people heard in their own languages God being praised and magnified. These people are uh, praising God in the human languages. That's how it, it was for the listeners. Okay, so what's going on? The people who are praying in tongues, which is the disciples, what are they doing? They're just praying in tongues. They don't even know what they're saying, isn't it? But those who are listening, they are able to hear that God is being magnified. Magnified is what? The greatness of God is being proclaimed or God is being thanked. So uh, sometimes when we speak in tongues, those that language could actually be the language which we are using to glorify God. Okay? And in other places... Uh, like Acts chapter 10, at a time when people were baptized in the Holy Spirit, uh, Luke again, he writes, it's given here, Acts 10 verse 46. It says, for they heard them speak with tongues 
and magnify God. All right. So the point that we are um, saying here is sometimes when we speak in tongues, we are able to praise God. You know how we um, write songs? If you go back and look at the, the story behind some of the songs that, that have been written and uh, some of the songs that uh, people uh, enjoy worshipping God with, you'll know that somebody wanted to express their revelation about God. And that's why they wrote a song. Or somebody wanted to express their thanksgiving and then they wrote a song. But there are times when we want to thank God, when we want to glorify God, when we don't have a song or we may not have the words. Has that happened to you? I don't know. But yeah, it happens. It happens to us where we don't know how to express our thanksgiving. Because maybe in the human language, there is no word which can explain how we feel about God's goodness. In those moments, it's just nice to express your thanksgiving in tongues. You can just begin to um, pray in tongues. You can just begin to uh, remember Paul said, I, I pray uh, in the spirit. I pray with my understanding. I sing in the spirit. I sing with my understanding. Why is he singing in the spirit? Singing in the spirit is also magnifying God. The way you sing in a normal language, human language, to thank God. Maybe there are times when we don't have the human words. But we want to thank God. We want to praise God. We have a tune. Right? You can just sing in the spirit. You don't know what you're singing. But it's like a release for your spirit man. And you feel satisfied. You feel like, yes, I am giving God praise uh, the manner in which he deserves it okay so sometimes it's just necessary to switch to tongues because our human language cannot even explain or cannot even describe um, the gratitude we feel or the praises that we want to bring to god so we can use tongues to thank god to worship and honor god Okay, let's move on. So there are uh, maybe two more points here. But I also want to just add here, we talked about praising God, right? Um, but there are times that, uh, you know, we may also have deep prayers and we don't know how to express in our own language. So I remember this one incident where there was um, uh, like a person I know Many people had prayed for uh, him to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, to flow in the gift of tongues, but he did not receive it. His wife received it, but he did not receive it. So this brother, uh, like he used to only pray in his own language, but there came a time in his family where one of his um, sisters, I think, was going through a very tough period in her marriage. Okay, and uh, obviously it's stressful for everyone. So at that point, when he used to sit to pray for his sister, um, initially, yes, he was able to pray in, in his own language, but eventually he did not even have the words to express the sadness that he felt or the, uh, you know, the, um, uh, what can you say, the grief that he felt uh, regarding the things that were going on. So one day when he just sat to pray for her, uh, he started praying in English and he didn't even realize he was suddenly praying in tongues. He had never prayed in tongues before that ever. But the point I'm making is, you know, sometimes we don't have the human language to express, whether it is thanksgiving, whether it is joy, or it could even be our grief and sorrow. Right? We may feel that intensely in our spirit and our human language is not able to carry it in prayer for us. So somewhere the spirit man just switches, switch to tongues because tongues will be able to express the deep thoughts 
right of our hearts led by the holy spirit of course so uh, there's a lot of satisfaction in uh, praying in tongues now just because i'm saying this i've already clarified i'm not saying don't pray in english or don't pray in hindi don't pray in your own language no we do need to pray in our own languages as well because um, there is value in that but there are times when tongues is the most appropriate way or the right way to pray so uh, use it when god has given us you know you you need to use it isn't it so i was sharing with all of you uh, the time when you know in my mom situation we had some difficult uh, seasons Uh, so particularly the the last phase right when um, we kind of knew that she won't make it uh, but those were the days when i would sit to pray i can't pray in english because i'm not able to express so i would just sit for hours praying in tongues i also don't know what i'm praying right but whenever i used to get up i would come back knowing that okay god has heard my prayer uh, that sense of confidence that you feel that you have expressed yourself in wholeness to god in the will of god because every word that we are speaking what did we say it is in the will of god it is according to the will of god so you don't even have to be afraid so i remember especially that phase of my life most days i did not have any language because i didn't know what to say right but it's important to pray in such moments you can't just not pray because you don't know what to say so i used to only pray in tongues for hours i'll just sit pray in tongues express myself okay but that kind of brings back the the peace brings back the stability in your spirit man at least you know what to do at least you know how to um you know you submitted everything to god and god carries you through so uh, developing this this habit of praying in the spirit is very important in the lives of believers very very important okay um both the prayer prayer lives whether you pray in your language it's very important pray in tongues very important so uh, we've got to uh, you know know the times and whenever you feel like praying in tongues just do that okay just do that it will build you up like nothing else and uh, you'll really see the value of it okay now let's move on so the next thing here it says uh, it enables our spirits to receive the mysteries of god for our lives you remember we said um, that the holy spirit knows the mind of god why because it is the spirit of god who knows the mind of god because it is our spirit who knows our mind nobody can read our mind isn't it so the holy spirit knows the mind of god so in first corinthians chapter 2 there is that passage where we read no i has seen no ear has heard no mind has conceived the things that god has prepared for those who love him so what does it say it's saying that there are things which are so beautiful that we can't even begin to understand those things that god has made ready for us okay but uh, it's exciting oh god has good things for us god has beautiful things for us because we are following him we would like to know what those things are but the bible tells us they are so beautiful they are so mysterious nobody knows nobody has seen these things but you know what in that same passage as you go below um you would find a scripture that says but he has revealed them to us by the holy spirit okay it's verse 10 there's no numbering here in your notes screen this for them yeah uh so right after God has prepared for those who love him it says but God has revealed them to us through his spirit God has revealed them to us through his spirit so you remember in the last class i asked you the question is it possible to know uh, the will of god in all things and we answered that question we said that yes it is possible 
because even though these things are so beautiful and so great that we can't understand them god has revealed it says god has revealed means what god has given us the understanding by how through the holy spirit so the holy spirit knows all these beautiful things and he can reveal it to us so then how can we apply that in our lives remember we said that when we speak to god what do we speak he who speaks in an unknown tongue speaks dash to god what does he speak mysteries mysteries, the mysteries correct mysteries to god so mysteries we um, explained last time that mysteries are for us we can't know what those things are but it's not a mystery for god but you see what did we read now god has revealed it's a mystery but god has revealed them to us through his spirit so yes we cannot understand tongues it's unknown you're speaking mysteries to god he does not know what he's speaking that's what paul says but in first corinthians chapter 2 what is he saying the holy spirit has revealed so even though i don't know what i'm saying after i say it god can deposit in my spirit the answer or the meaning the meaning of what i prayed you got it did you all get what i'm saying or is it a mystery i hope you can understand what i'm saying right so we speak mysteries to god we don't we don't get it when we are speaking it but once we have spoken it what what does the holy spirit do the meaning of what we have spoken we just saw now first corinthians chapter 2 verse 10 says but god has revealed god can reveal to us that means sometimes when we pray in tongues uh, let's imagine you know i take 10 minutes i'm praying in tongues i don't know what i said okay i absolutely don't know what i said but after the 10 minutes of praying remember i told you there are times when you don't know what decision to make right but after you pray in tongues suddenly you get one idea suddenly you get a thought suddenly you get a direction where is it coming from so whatever you prayed the holy spirit brings revelation into your spirit from what you just now prayed understood so the language that i prayed i i cannot i cannot make sense of it but from my prayer a revelation can hit my spirit you got it so even something like i just uh, told you about a decision that we want to make and the holy spirit gives us an idea a thought there can be times when we are praying okay and in tongues and god can tell you things which are going to happen 20 years later can that happen yes or no only god knows right what will happen 20 years later but we can get the revelation even now god may tell us right now i am going to do this in your life 25 years from now 30 years from now this is the business you are going to do these are the books you are going to write okay these are the songs you are going to sing now you can know what is going to happen later because by his spirit he has revealed okay so this is the benefit hidden secrets in the mind of god hidden secrets in the thoughts of god it can get deposited into our spirit when we speak in tongues why because when we speak in tongues the revelation of the holy spirit begins to enlighten our understanding and we begin to see things right about so many matters i gave you only one or two examples but there are um, you know all the operation of the gifts of the spirit you learn about the gifts of the spirit in second year um, so there are many things that god can reveal and it's amazing to walk with god like that okay i remember uh, as far as the gifts of the spirit is concerned i had read a book and in that book there was a person who learned about tongues and he only knew about tongues 
So he thought, okay, I learned about tongues. Let me practice it. And he started praying. And he felt like God was calling him to full-time ministry. So he um, uh, left his job. Okay, we don't recommend it to all. If the Lord is leading you to do it, you do it. Otherwise, there's no need. But he left his job. And he decided, I will sit in my house. I will pray in tongues from morning to evening. That's all. Nothing else. So that's what he did. He started. He, he managed one week, two weeks, three weeks. Okay? He didn't do anything else. His normal household work, praying in tongues. Morning to evening, shut the door, pray, 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 pray. Then one day, uh, there was a, a prayer meeting in a church close by. And he was not a preacher. He was a nobody. But what happened is the preacher who was supposed to come there didn't come. And they asked this brother. They said, brother, they are not coming. Is it possible for you to um, share the word today. Okay, you can keep it simple, no problem, but you share the word. And he goes up and he shares the word. But when he starts to pray, to his surprise, he's starting to see pictures. He's starting to see a broken bone. He's starting to see, you know, somebody's lungs affected with, with some problem. He's starting to see so many things. So he... Uh, he is starting to call, call all that out. He has never done this before. But what has happened? The mysteries of God are being revealed. Why? He just took so much time praying in tongues. He also didn't know. But when he was ministering, all these things are happening to him. Right? By the Holy Spirit. Okay, are you all understanding? Right? So we can receive revelation. We can receive revelation. From there, his you know ministry began, and uh, he continued. Right, a, a lot of he uh, talks about um, the gifts of the spirit and operating in the gifts of the spirit and things like that. Um, but I'm just helping us understand here that when we start to pray in tongues, okay, there are many levels. One is just understanding about you know small little things our decisions or let's say big things about our, our life choices, our life decisions. Where should I live? What career should I have? Whom should I marry? What business should I do? How should I manage my finances? What about my ministry? Big decisions. God can reveal. Even right now he can reveal. When we are, uh, you know, maybe some of us are young. We are in school, college. But even now we can know. So that we can start preparing towards it. So God can reveal. And the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. We all become very um, uh, sensitive, sensitive to the revelation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So uh, these are all the benefits of praying in tongues. So it's not just, you know, God, he just did something unique and told, okay, you pray in this language. That's it. No, there is so much more. There are deep things behind praying in tongues. Okay, so I'll stop with that. I think we have, we have tried to uh, assess a lot of important key truths about uh, praying in tongues. But if you have any other questions, we'll take that. Now, um, there is a question here in the chat, which um, Daniel Oliver says, ma'am, how to pray in tongues? For the first time, okay. How to pray in tongues for the first time? So usually, um, Daniel, the activation of the gifts of the spirit, one of which is tongues. Okay, tongues is a gift of the spirit. How does it get activated when we are baptized in the Holy Spirit? In Acts chapter two. When did the people speak in tongues? After, you, you remember it says, and suddenly there was a you know, rushing mighty wind and they were all filled with the spirit and then they began to speak in tongues. So the baptism in the Holy Spirit is what is necessary for a believer to start operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The first gift that usually starts operating is tongues. Usually. Okay? Other gifts can also operate. But common gift that we see in the book of Acts, 
is tongues. So when somebody is baptized in the Holy Spirit, you will find that they will start speaking in tongues for the first time. Okay. Now how to make them uh, speak in tongues for the first time? Nothing. Just pray for them in the name of Jesus. Ask Jesus to baptize them uh, in the Holy Spirit. Ask them to expect it and believe God for it. Okay. And then just continue to pray and you'll see that, uh, you know, slowly they'll just start to speak in tongues. Now, there are many other things that people do. They say, uh, some people say that um, uh, you should um, imitate, right? If somebody, some tongues language is there, then uh, make people imitate. But we don't see all that in the Bible. So I think we shouldn't get into all such things. Just pray for them. In the book of Acts, what do we see? Believers prayed for other believers to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and they received the baptism. They started praying in tongues. That's all. Okay. So Daniel, I hope that answers your question. If you have any other, um, I mean, if you meant to know something else, then you can always ask. So anything else about praying in tongues, praying in the spirit? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, it's, it's as I told you, when you pray in the spirit, so uh, your question is that you have certain challenges. Maybe yeah, you were pointing out anger. When you pray in the spirit, you feel free from it. How is it that it happens? See, it's like a fire. Remember we said the fire of the spirit burns in us. So uh, the things of the flesh will start to die. So not just anger, maybe any other um, character, flaws that we see in ourselves, uh, we can actually overcome that by praying in the spirit. Now, also don't look at it like, okay, I'll only pray in the spirit and that is the only solution. No. Um, see, the way God works, right, there are usually many different things that have to work together. So uh, even, uh, let's say, our own decision to overcome anger, to deal with anger, reflect on why is it that I'm getting angry? What are the root causes that make me react like this? So uh, the point is that we have to deal with it at both the spiritual level as well as the psychological, practical level as well. So just because we feel good after we pray in the spirit, it doesn't mean that everything is sorted, right? We also have to deal with other things. Right? So we, we need both. Then we can uh, properly overcome the weakness. In this case, you're pointing out anger, but it can be anything else also. Does it help? OK, sure. Thank you. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Huh, OK. Can a demon possessed man speak in tongues? Answer is yes. But only thing is, that's demonic tongues. It's not uh, our tongues. Which, uh, see, there are two sources. Sources meaning the uh, origin, where it's coming from. So the tongues we are talking about is by the Holy Spirit. But even demon-possessed people can manufacture a language. It can sound like tongues, but it is coming from the demonic world. So it can happen. Yeah, so for that you have to operate in a, another gift of the spirit. It's called discerning of spirits. Okay, so that's what. Uh, we can become so sensitive in the operation of the gifts of the spirit that you can immediately recognize. For example, you think about this uh, situation where um, uh, uh, Paul 
okay he goes to um, a place called philippi so when he goes to a place called philippi there is a demon possessed girl uh, with the spirit of python she goes around telling everybody that these are the servants of god these are the servants of god it sounds good right we won't be angry if somebody goes and tells that oh these are the servants of god but she does it so much at one point paul gets angry and he casts out that spirit from her why did paul get angry how did he know she was telling good only servants of god but discerning of spirits you can recognize what is a demon spirit what is god spirit so that we need yeah it, does it answer your question okay good yes any anything else uh, please yes nelson ha huh. um the other people in acts chapter 2 you are saying that the people who listen heard their own language right so okay see there are at least three kinds of tongues the tongues that i am teaching about right now it's the first category of tongues known as uh, uh tongues for personal prayer tongues as personal prayer language there is a second category of tongues tongues as a sign tongues as a sign s i g n tongues as a sign so tongues as a sign is what is applicable in acts chapter 2 okay so when people were praying in tongues others were able to hear human languages so that is also possible if you read um first corinthians chapter 14 even there paul lists out tongues as a sign he lists it out there the third kind of tongues is tongues as a message so when i speak in tongues to a congregation the congregation cannot understand for that i need um either i myself should operate in another gift of the holy spirit which is interpretation of tongues or there has to be another person who will operate in the interpretation of tongues you got it so these are all three different categories so tongues as a sign is when uh, we may speak in tongues and others can hear a human language okay and i've heard lot of testimonies especially um at the time when there was a great missionary movement you know hudson taylor uh, that era uh, it seems what people used to do is they would go to a foreign country and they'll go and they'll, they'll just start talking in tongues but the local people there will understand their local language how we don't know but there are testimonies like this that like i speak in tongues but the person let's say i go to bombay okay and i'm speaking in tongues i don't know what i'm saying but the local person there understands marathi you got it that's tongues as a sign so there is a tongues like that also but that's not the prayer language which we are talking about you got it okay great uh fine so now mm, there is a question in the chat where daniel is asking does praying in tongues we need to pray aloud or we can pray within ourselves okay good question so praying in tongues we can pray loudly obviously we do that so we can understand but praying within ourselves see it depends on which tongues we are speaking you got it so when we come to church in some churches everybody speaks loudly in tongues okay uh, but in our church we all we do speak in tongues we believe in tongues all that is there but we we don't necessarily speak loudly reason is there are a lot of unbelievers who come they won't understand what we are doing you got it but when it comes to our prayer times when it comes to our bible college supernatural hour we speak loudly because there are no unbelievers here so everybody understands what's happening so it's not going to confuse any unbeliever so we can pray loudly in tongues no problem so you have to look at the context if you're in a place where people won't understand you're praying in tongues you better pray softly quietly under your breath i remember like you know when i was still at my job um i would sit there at my computer and i'll pray in tongues and i'll do my work 
Nobody will even know. You can quietly pray in tongues, right? You don't have to pray loudly. So that is also possible. So Daniel, I hope you got your answer. You can. You can do both. It, look at the context. Then you decide how loudly you want to pray in tongues. OK, fine. So Sister Gertrude, um, how to test the gifts you have? How to test? OK, test is a question. Mm, uh, how to test? I think, uh, Sister, can you explain uh, what you mean by test the gifts? Sister, I have a, a gift of vision, I know. But uh, I'm not sure whether I have the gift of healing. Because sometimes I uh, people get healed, sometimes they don't get healed. So I don't know if I have any other gifts. How do I know that I have other gifts, sister? OK, sure. OK, thank you, Sister Gertrude. Uh, see, it's like, I'll just give you a silly example, OK? So I'm not in no way putting it down, um, uh, the gifts of the spirit. But it's like this. Like if you have, uh, let's say, two sweets that look the same, OK? Uh, and you don't know like what, what those sweets are, or you don't know what flavor those sweets are, you'll only know if you eat it, isn't it? Yeah. Right? You just have to take a bite of it. Then you can tell, oh, this is whatever, vanilla flavor. This is this flavor. You can tell because you've tasted it. Yes. So, similarly, when it comes to the operation of the gifts of the spirit, the important thing is to flow. You have to take a step. And you have to start operating in it. Then you'll know whether it's working or it's not working. So start praying for people. If, you, if you're not sure about gifts of healing, then believe God for it. Believe God for it and start praying. Right? So when you see healings taking place, then you can tell, oh, yes, you know, it's operating. Or uh, uh, when you see pictures, when you see, uh, you know, certain, certain images in your spirit eyes, then you start calling it out. Then you can tell. Even maybe people will tell, oh, correct, sister, what you're saying is correct. Then you can confirm, oh, yeah, that is the gift of prophecy. I'm flowing in it. So how can we tell? You have to start flowing, sister. Then only you can tell. Otherwise, you can't tell. OK, sister. Makes Thank sense, you. no? Does it make sense? Yes, thank you, sister. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Correct. OK, so um, no. Yeah, so the question is, when uh, in Acts chapter 2, initially people are praying in tongues. Then Peter stands up and he uh, speaks. Which language is Peter speaking in? He is speaking in his, uh, his own language to make the people understand. So it's not tongues. No. So if Peter were to speak in tongues, the message, people cannot understand unless there is an interpreter. Yeah, because that tongues, earlier when people spoke in tongues, others understood because that tongues was the, uh, uh, the tongues which is a sign. It was that category of tongues. That's where they understood. OK, it's clear now. OK, fine. Uh, there's one question. Let me see if I can quickly take this. So uh, John Bessie is saying, um, many times I observed in our church when we are praying, for people suffering with demons. So when we start praying in tongues, they cannot control that power. And they will say that we will not be here. And we will leave this person. My question is, praying in tongues is the language between us and God. Then why are demons getting, um, OK, when we pray in tongues? OK, see, yes, of course, we are praying to God. OK. There is, there is something that is happening in the spiritual realm, right? Which we can't explain or describe. So even though I'm speaking to God, there is, uh, let me just put it as some power that the demons can also see that this is God's power and uh, they are distressed and they want to leave. So it 
could be something like that but obviously they don't understand what you're speaking right that is why we'll come to that later when we study one more subject believers authority in that when we command demons we have to command in our language because they can't understand tongues so if you speak in tongues they'll also get confused you got it so uh, when we are speaking to them demons we have to speak clearly and give clear instructions like you know uh, i'd bind you in the name of jesus don't speak or come out in jesus name we have to talk to them clearly then only they'll follow instructions okay so on that note we'll stop right we'll take a break let's come back in 10 minutes and continue uh, we'll we'll also answer other questions here thank you